Hey, hello everybody. Um, I just want to say a couple of words. Uh, yeah, yesterday we had a most amazing day <laughs> at Laidlaw College cancelling um, our cancelling year and we had some education students there and I think one theology student as well. Um, we were um, we were on a marae in Mangaray. Uh, yeah, it was fantastic, a fantastic day. Um, yeah, we got to see the, we got to hear the heart of, um, of, uh, uh, Val and her husband, um, Lionel, um, who were running the Marai with their, with their kids, their children, their grown-up children and their, and their not-so-grown-up children. Yeah, they've got a some fantastic kind of operation there. I think the thing that really struck me most from the whole day was uh, was that um, Phi Val is uh, she's um, five years saved as a Christian, and um, you know she just kept saying in the middle of everything that she was talking about the Marai and talking about their history, and that she kept on saying that like you know to God be the glory and um, you know praise Jesus and. Thank you, God, for this, and thank you, God, for that. You know, sir. So, even though it was it was um, it was a day to to get steeped into Maori culture, um, what I really got from it was uh, was the the bo- the sense that we're all one body in the body of Christ. You know, um, so even though you know we're from you know, different different cultures, different backgrounds, and that that we all seem to be uniting as one body in uh, in in Jesus, you know, and that for me was just like it made it. You know, a lot of, a lot of people who were who were there. Some of the people were saying to me that like you know sometimes when you come onto a Mariah and you've got the po ferry at the beginning, um, that it can be quite intimidating, and you know people stand off, and there's a lot of kind of. <coughs> you know, maybe a degree of intimidation. Um, you know, you know. I mean, I know it's part of the Maori custom is to kind of, you know, present a challenge. And uh, and I do I do like aspects of that, you know, I think it's important. But, um, but you know, one of the guys who was leading us, uh, Dean, he was kind of the student leader there speaking on our behalf. He said that like, uh, you know, that you could see a, a, a discernible difference, you know. Um, in the way that they were everybody was so friendly and so welcoming and that and i think i put that i'm pretty sure that's i could put that down to the fact that uh that they were christian leaders born again christian leaders um so the food was amazing um you know some kuyas came in that's some uh grand uh, grandparents um Three ladies came in. I think they had come over to get some fish heads, and they might have come over to get some kumara or whatever. But you know, they came in and said hello to everybody, which was beautiful. Um, we had some beautiful singing, some waiatas. Um, the class was amazing. We uh, we all stood up and we we had to uh, we had to say our mehi mehis and our pepiha, which is basically um, we said you know we said a. A bit of an introduction, the mehi mehi, and then the, we had the, we introduced ourselves, which is a peppy hand, talked about who 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 we are and where we're from and our mountain and our river and our iwi and that. So um, you know that was a bit daunting because people were trying to memorize their words and some people had never stood up before and even though they were reading, um, you know, two girls from the education class, even though they were reading from their notes, they were still very um, taken by the by fear actually you know like um yeah a lot of there was a lot of anxiety there for them and and uh so their their classmates gathered around them and supported them in this time of vulnerability and that was really something special actually that that really touched my heart you know because um it just this just showed so much love for each other and you know actually i'm nearly nearly uh weeping here just thinking about that you know that was that really opened the the space there to to human to be a human to be human to human vulnerability to and that's the reality of human existence you know um yeah i i yeah i was <clears throat> i'm still quite undone by that you know 
it was a beautiful experience i think julia was one of the girls you know and i can't remember the other girl and that but I mean, they were so struggling and with anxiety and nervousness and insecurity and that and i think there wasn't anybody in the room that couldn't relate to that um it was it was beautiful actually it was a beautiful thing and a real privilege to be in the room you know when that was happening um yeah the, as i said the grub was gorgeous we we went out around the marae and we had a look um you know they've got a two acre site there so they were uh they were, uh lionel was talking about what they were what they're planting um and they have a soil um a soil person who's studying soil science from america there a young girl and so she, you know they're doing some pretty incredible work there they get some fish heads as well from the market and that and you know fish tails um after being filleted and um and they People come and make soup out of that stuff. You know, my own uh, son's mom, Kathy. She makes, she uses fish heads and makes, makes, um, makes soups out of it. And um, but they also make uh, fish fertilizer as well, um, which was pretty cool. They were showing us what they were doing, and they've got a knife sharpening service there. Um, and I think they're also planning to to do some filleting, some fish filleting for people. Um, you know, on the wharfs you know, to go down to some of the big wharfs where some of the bo big boats come in and, and offer a service there well, out of the back of a truck. <clears throat> so they're pretty, pretty creative. But there was a lot of love, a lot of love in that, in that uh, Morai. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of the actual name now. I can't, Papa, Papa Tua, Papa Tua Nappy or something like that. Papa, Papa Tua, Tua Nappy, my Barry now. My, my Tereo is, has probably not right there. But, um, but it's in Mangaray. Um, and that so, yeah, just just an amazing day, you know, one of those big days, big day in my life, and I'm sure it was a very big day for for a few people where I really got to got to to stand shoulder to shoulder with people with world changers, people that are people that are, and it was just, you know, I just don't I don't believe you can I don't believe you can make any impact in the world unless you're connected unless you're connected to God. Um, you know, you need to know who you belong to, who's your maker, who's who's your protector. You know, I wear this cross here around my neck, basically to remind me on a on an hourly basis, or I don't even remember on an hourly basis, but as often as possible during the day. Um, who's my who's my rock? Who's my refuge? Who's my who's my north? Um, who's my leader? Who's my creator? who's my nourisher, who's my provision, you know, because I think it's so easy to, you know, to go to look to the left and to the right and um, and to start, you know, um, following false gods, you know, I've done it for years. <clears throat> so, you know, seven years saved and I've been seven years finally, uh, you know, learning to orientate myself towards a God that, the God that is the great provider, he is the great I am and he's, you know, my life just keeps getting better and better, and that's my experience of people. You know, people in in who anybody who's come to Jesus has has and given their life to the Lord and made a decision to put God first. But they've just found that everything changes in their life. You know, your family life improves, your career improves, and I'm not talking small improvements. I'm talking about like you know, if you want to, if you if you want the thousandfold increase. Um, then you just make a decision today to put Jesus first, you know, and it's done. It's done by saying, Jesus, I, today I decide to put you first, you know, put first, put him first in your life. And and all that that looks like is is that you just go out and talk to God and ask him, what will I do about this situation? What will I do about that situation? He's your he's your uh, counselor, you know, and you can talk to God, you know. You can go out in the middle of the night, stand under the stars and ask God, look, well, I'm not sure what to do about this situation or what to do about that situation. I do it all the time. I get alone with God at night. There's no point in me relying on pe other people to tell me what to do. I'll, 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 I'll share some situations with some people and that and, and I listen to what they've got to say. But, but at the end of the day, you know, you've got to make your own mind up about these things, you know, and, and, uh, and I think... Um, you know, everybody, everybody knows, um, 
you know, yeah, everybody knows that you've got to make your own mind up what you're doing. And so, uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't rely on human beings to tell me what to do anymore. I just listen to, listen to, listen to God, get his view on what I should do. And, and actually, I always get a, a great peace. Um, I get a peace then about what's the right thing to do, you know. I call it maybe a surrender, you know. I usually surrender to what God's trying to paint. That's what I've been realizing recently. It's like God's painting all the time. He's painting. When I was at the Marai, uh, you know, I was sitting down and it was like, right, you know, I was starting to zone out. And I just said to myself, right, what, I wonder what's God painting at the moment in this particular moment? What picture is God painting in this Marai using these different people, using, using us, using me? And so I perked my head up and then and started listening to, to what, uh, you know, Matua Brad, Brad was talking about, you know? Um, Brad, <clears throat> because, uh, yeah, because, you know, like, even though he was speaking, he was speaking to Rayo, so I couldn't understand what he was talking about. But, um, but I was willing to participate in the painting that God was painting at that time. And, and that meant just staying attentive to what, to Brad's facial expressions, to his, you know, just keeping my heart connected with his and, and supporting him as he was speaking essentially for us. So it was very important that I, that I actually uh, participated in what he was speaking. Yeah, so Saturday today, I think we're off to Dress Mart. Um, you know, lovely to, to do a little bit of a video. And um, I think people should get up onto YouTube more and make videos, you know, tell people what's going on in their lives because we all have a lot going on in our lives. And I think... The, the enemy will always try to tell you that you're not important and that there's nothing special about you. But actually, uh, the Bible says that we're all made in the image of God. Um, and that we're all wonderfully and fearfully made. And that we've got, we're made of power, love, and a strong mind. So, um, yeah, so, a sound mind. So, you know, don't let the devil keep you down. Get up there, get onto YouTube, you know. It's easy to make a video. You can go live, just make a video and say what's on your mind. Uh, bless the world with with what's going on in your life. And who knows, you know, if you've got something going on, you might, uh, somebody out there might have a great idea, you know, or probably will have a good idea. And that because we're all in this together, you know. We oper if we operate as one body under Jesus, Jesus uh, as the head, um, you know, we're destined to we're destined to um, enjoy a great amount of happiness and to finally get the world operating properly. Okay, God bless. Take it easy.